Six Ages Gaming is brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net. Check them out for all your singles, sealed product, and play mats. Hey guys, Matt here bringing you another deck spotlight brought to you by Six Ages Gaming, GamersGauntlet.net, and oh wait, I'll wait till the 5,000 subscriber giveaway to mention the other sponsor. Uh, so today we have for you, everyone's been asking about it, everyone's been spamming my inbox, a Necrolance deck. Finally, I get it. Um, if you're not aware, this deck has been just, it, every top eight uh, Alice Cluster event uh, made top eight at the AGP uh, Charlotte Circuit Series Alice Cluster event they had. No matter what, this is one of the main decks that you need to be aware of and you should build to put into your gauntlet. Now, the very first thing I will say is that there are flex spots in this deck. Now, there's a couple of tech choices that a lot of the different decks go in, but um, off the top of my head, the cards that you might want to have more flexibility with uh, the two dragons, 8 8 Swiftness. Uh, I just like the card, I think it's great. That's something you can cut. The two rapid growths, not a lot of people uh, agree with that, but it's also great for discarding off Guinevere. Uh, and also the split between Apollos and Artemis Bows. Uh, a lot of people aren't in agreement with those either. So those are kind of the cards you can move around, switch to how you feel like you might want to run the deck, but um, absolutely at the core of the deck. You know, you have the four Gwyns, the four Rook Eggs, the four Necromancies, the four Lancelots. And I personally believe you can 100% not play this deck without playing uh, the three Keepers and the three Flame King Shouts just because of how much they add to the deck. Uh, so first we'll talk about the Ruler itself, then go into the Stone deck, talk about the main board, and then talk about this specific sideboard option. Now there's a lot of different ways you can run the sideboard in this deck. Uh, out of all the lists I saw, this was my favorite, so that's why I decided to cover the Sylvia Tech sideboard. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so first we have Reflect. Uh, so we've talked about this rule a lot. It should be no surprise. But basically the main important part about this deck and why you use Reflect over any other ruler is because it has a free plus 200, plus 200 pump, which is very, very relevant for Lancelot. So overall, this is just obviously the best utility ruler that we have in Alice Cluster. Uh, it can untap stuff. It can filter for stuff, tutors for stuff, bounces guys. A Reflect refrain just... Uh, does it all, and until they really print something that I'm not even sure what it could be. Uh, Reflect Refrain is definitely here to stay for the next year and a half, or a year and four months, whatever whatever it is until this card rotates. So definitely expect to see a lot more deck spotlights with this card. Uh, then of course, because we are playing a lot of Regalia, we want to have the best stone base possible, and because the card's just way too good, uh, we play four Rulers Memoria. Uh, again, because we play 10 Regalia, you can cut down to 8 if you wanted to. Uh, this card just really does a lot. Uh, it, in a lot of the decks that we're seeing now, they all splash for things that are very easy, like Hera, Hera is a very splashable card. Precio we can splash in this deck because we only need one green source. Uh, things like that, the barrier that's in the main deck that we can splash for, the rapid growth, things of that nature. Because they only cost one will attribute of that specific color, uh, by playing four of these, we're you know almost guaranteed to see it when we need to. And it really does help thin out what thin out the deck in terms of what we can include in it, and also some great sideboarding options. So, uh, if you haven't picked up four of those already, I definitely recommend picking them up. And then nothing else that's fancy. We just finish off the stone deck with six uh, basic fire stones. It's very important to note. Actually, someone asked me about running other stones in this. We always want to see uh, our fire wheel turn one. I really wanted to put it in, but I have such bad luck with it. Uh, there's a stone, I think it's Unyielding Flames Memoria is the name of it. it. You can tap it to pump something plus 200 damage. But the problem is, it comes into play tapped if your opponent's at 4,000 life. And especially in this deck, we're not often tacking on turn one. You know, we're not running a Flame Sprite, Demon Flame combo. So that's two turns of hitting a stone, potentially, of having it come into play tapped. And when we're trying to be a more aggressive strategy that's very linear and wants to hit certain things on curve, that's certainly not something that we can afford. So... Uh, if you're a more risky man than I am, please feel free to include it. However, I am not all about that life, so uh, be my guest and try out. Let me know what you think. Uh, moving into our zero drops for our regalia, we have two demon swords. Uh, we want to see just one of these. It's great for being able to uh, flip our reflect into refrain and be able to tutor up immediately on our turn for something. Uh, and it's also great for banishing our rook eggs if we absolutely need to. Uh, two Apollo. One, this is great for a cyborg card that we're going to run, the Angel of Wisdom. Uh, and two, this card is really great because you can bounce your Lancelot, replay the same Lancelot, and get those Necromancies back on them. So in a way, especially if you set up the board state to where you're going to be able to swing through, there's going to be multiple turns where you can just use the same Lancelot, and you're getting in about 1,000 to 2,000 damage. Now it's not as great because it doesn't have flying or evasion, but if your opponent's tapped out, everything's tapped down, maybe you bounce another blocker, this basically says, hey, I'm going to rebuy my Lancelot and get to swing for another uh, 
1,000 damage. And I actually got to kill a Seraph by, able, by having double 700 ping triggers on Lancelot. Speaking of the 700 ping trigger from Lancelot, this card has been super relevant. Uh, Artemis Bow is great. Uh, two, there's actually a few things here. One, it can help push through damage. You know, it can attack blockers. Um, and if I could have a third one in the deck, I really would. Um, two, it can add that extra 400 damage to Lancelot 700, which means if they only have one Resonator on the board and they're going to, and you're attacking with Lancelot and you ping that for 700, if you have a bow on the field, they can't block with it, assuming it's less than 1,000 uh, defense, which turns out is like 99% of the cards we care about in the meta anyways. So just by threatening this on board is going to make sure that your Lancelot gets through and damage. I realize it's not always going to work out that way, but I definitely think it's worth having two of, especially because we play the Sylvia out of the sideboard and target attack can be great. Last but not least, four orbs, which I was reading the Facebook comments, and I'm not sure if a lot of people just underestimate this card, uh, but it turns out when you're giving red a draw engine and they get to draw cards for free and your ruler's more, it turns out produces the wind wheel. That's really, really good for a red deck. You know, the rules of a red deck are that, hey, we're not going to get to draw these extra cards. We're not going to have, you know, plus one on effects. And this card just says, hey, guess what? I'm going to let you get free cards, you know, well, free in terms of you have to pay one green will, but you're not actually losing a card to do it. Um, and can, can give you considerable card advantage throughout the course of the game. So, um, especially if you're planning for the game to go longer, if you have multiple of these in play and you're getting to draw, you know, two, three extra cards a turn plus a fourth one if you're filtering, that's very, very strong for a red deck. Uh, and this is another reason why I love playing Reflect with this deck is because you get to run four orbs and it not only helps what your current strategy is, uh, it allows you to move the deck in a way that you're gonna get to draw these extra cards. And sorry, I just keep dropping all these cards on the floor. So up next, we have four rapid growths. Uh, this one is definitely more of a tech choice. Please feel free to cut it if you want, but I like being able to prop my Apricias, my Lancelots and all that stuff. Uh, it's another way to get your Lancelot to 1,000 damage for another trigger for only one uh, Wind Will, and because we have Rulers Memorial, it's easily splashable, so I can see where a lot of people might not like this card, but I definitely think it has some value to it. Uh, a card I would not cut in a 1,000 years, two Barriers of Shadow. Um, we've been playing a lot of Alice Cluster lately now, and it turns out, you know, almost every single deck runs Regalia, so this card is very, very relevant. And especially if they're on a more Regalia-heavy deck, and let's say they got a bunch of bows in play, or they have a bunch of orbs themselves, like... The Reflect Control deck runs four orbs and four Artemis bows, and if you just put one of these in field turn one, after they just took, you know, three orbs in play, or two orbs in an Artemis bow on their turn one, you're going to be feeling pretty good. And it's definitely a card that, again, with Reflect, you can just filter away for absolutely no penalty. Again, the namesake of the deck, <coughs> Necromancy of the Undead Lord. Uh, basically a free plus 200, plus 200 spell. Yes, sometimes you have to cast off Ruler's Memoria. It doesn't feel the best. It absolutely doesn't. But... Being able to recur this from your graveyard over and over and over and over and over in itself is such a version of card advantage, either be it with Lancelot or the fact that it lets you trade up for free with certain other resonators, it definitely adds a lot to the deck and probably why uh, this deck is so good. I mean, Lancelot Necromancy is just, again, the bread and butter of this deck, and it's such an insane combo. Uh, four, four Rook Eggs, really no explanation should be needed here. If for some unfortunate reason we don't have Gwyn, we get to play this. Great on defense, allows us to tutor up a Lancelot or whatever we're missing, and is also just amazing, amazing, amazing fodder to Guinevere, who turns out is our main engine for getting things into the graveyard. Now, again, a thing to note is when you banish a Rook Egg to Guinevere, please make sure you resolve your Rook Egg first because that's part of the cost. You don't want to get a penalty for drawing extra cards, which could be a game lost in a tournament, and then you tutor up, uh, or you tutor up your card, then draw the two, discard the one. And again, I like this version because it plays the Rapid Growth, which allows us to have another discard outlet. Because, again, sometimes you're going to be put in a position where you don't want to discard anything in your hand, but you have to because of her effect. And if you have something like Rapid Growth, you can play it out of the graveyard. Obviously, Necromancy is your best thing because you can just get it back for free. So I like having six different cards that we can uh, pitch and not feel bad about. Uh, two drops, the other half of the namesake, uh, Lancelot. <sighs> Again, this card is just a little too good. Um, the fact that it gets to be a 6-6 with Swiftness on a 2-drop, you know, you can't Demon Flame it, you can Dark Purge it, but then they just give it plus 200, plus 200 from Reflect, so then you have to wait to the start of your turn. So you're still taking the 600, maybe 800 damage. Like, it doesn't feel great. Um, it's, it's definitely a lot of work. So there's a way to, you know, utilize the stack. This is definitely it. Getting the extra Necromancies on them feels great. And, I mean, the card is just, again, perhaps a little too good, but hey, we're working with it, and it's, it is what it is. 
The 700 damage ping it has is super relevant. Uh, moving into our two drops, we have two Prishu. Uh, again, because we are a splash on the green, uh, you'll see in our dual series video this week that I missed green. I had to Flame King shot a Prishu in for almost no value, but because I want to get an extra damage. Um, I just, I'm very hard pressed not to play this card right now. Um, yes, we have a lot of uh, clunkiness in terms of what three drops we want to use. You know, we have, we have uh, Athena, we have Prishu, we have the Keeper of the Past. All these three drops are very, very good for a red deck. Some of them are more focused towards big red decks. This, you know, some of them are more fo focused towards aggressive decks. And I really think because Prishia gets to deal that 500 damage on exit, that it really gears her towards the more aggressive decks. Now, if you're playing a big red strategy, I'd definitely lean towards Athena because you can line up the board. We're going to have a, either a uh, time traveling emissary or a flame uh, or a flame sprite into a demon flame combo to clear the board. And then Athena, if you have extra will up, just hits like a truck. I mean, she gets huge really quick, and if she's unanswered, she's going to end the game, you know, in one or two turns herself. Uh, one of my absolute, absolute favorite cards and combos, this with Flame King Shout. Uh, Keeper is insane. You get to put in the Flame King Shout, resolve that, she comes into play, your Flame King Shout's in the graveyard, you can deal with just Flame King Shout, 600 damage or something. So you're going to deal, let's assume, 800 damage or something very easily. Now, if your opponent has a nec uh, necromancy up Lancelot, you know, it's going to be an 8-8. It's just enough to be able to kill their uh, Lancelot. Yes, you have the 400 damage from Flame King Shao, so you can exile like two one-drops. I get it, but there's other things that can kill that's very relevant. Now, the one downside is that, yes, it can target J-Rulers, but Flame King Shao doesn't hit J-Rulers. So, yes, it's very easy to kill like a Seraph or something by just exiling Flame King Shao on any other card, really, at that point. Um, but... There was one game where I was able to exile my dragon in the Flame King shot and able to kill their uh, primogenitor. So that's something very, very important to keep in mind is that it can also hit J-Rulers. And sometimes it makes the math awkward. Sometimes you have to exile more cards than you want to, but it is what it is. Just speaking of that wonderful card, Flame King Shout, deals 400 damage to everything. Could, can put your Prisha into play if you're uh, will locked. It puts your Earth into play, gives it Swiftness, and deals like, all this da it, approximately infinite damage you know, to whatever they're playing. Card's great. It's just an amazing combo card with uh, Keeper. And then a card for me that has just been absolutely amazing uh, is Cuddly and Born Dragon. Uh, this is 8 8 Swiftness for 4. Yes, it's a little expensive, but if the game goes longer, you're going to be able to put yourself in a position where you have one or two Necromancies in the graveyard. You're going to be able to leave your frame up for a bounce, and then you can just play this, bounce their, you know, maybe their one Lucifer that they have, and swing through for that 1200 damage. So this card is a one of in some lists. I might split this up to like a one of Dragon, one of Athena, just because if the game goes long, Athena is great in its own route. Uh, there's a lot of options for the deck, but again, it was, it's a corner case, I'll admit it, 100% admit it. I got to kill a Gil Lapis only because I saw one earlier, got to discard off Guinevere and then banish that in the Flame King Shout to kill it. That's probably how it shouldn't ever happen because he's a 14-14 and you're most likely going to be able to kill other J-Rulers very, very easily. But, I mean, it's something to keep in mind in case you need the extra damage. So, that's all we have for the main deck. Lastly, I'll just go into some sideboarding options. Again, there's a lot of different ways to go, but I went with this one because I know a lot of people like Red Green Sylvia. So, uh, we have a Sylvia on the sideboard. We switched this out for Reflect. Um, and depending on what kind of matchup, if there are going to be on Dark Alice, obviously your Necromancies aren't as good. So, you want to focus on something more that's going to be just straight-up damage-oriented. And plus, this can definitely help color fix uh, for you as well. Speaking of color fixing, then we get to do some very fun things. Uh, we get to play two more Prishia. It lets us go up to the playset. lets us have a more aggressive strategy, again, because she de deals five damage on exit and because she is just such an amazing card. Uh, we have three Wall of Winds. Again, if you're on the play, this card is absolutely insane. And if you get to you know live the dream of turn two, landslide into protection from uh, you have Wall of Wind and protect it from a Dark Purge or something of that nature, it's going to feel really good being able to keep your Lancelot on board and getting to blow out your opponent with one win spell. Uh, one more Apollo, and really what this is for is we're playing three angels out of the sideboard, Angel of Wisdom. Uh, turns out this card is very good uh, in the mirror, being able to destroy their Lancelot for free. You then get a 700-700 flyer. I mean, this, this card can just be great. It kills a Lucifer. There's a lot that it is doing right now in Alice Cluster meta. So if you're playing at your local game shop, I just want to take a quick side note. If you can cast this card and you're playing light, it should be in your sideboard, if not in your main deck. This card does an insane amount of work in today's meta. 
So, and when we see the next set where darkness gets a huge boost as well, guess what? We're gonna see more darkness based decks and this card gets even more value. Uh, so this is definitely a card that I think most people should, or my you know, note or advice is definitely keep an eye on this card because I think it's gonna be seeing a lot more play, if not immediately, but very soon. It's also great in the Xion decks. More wonderful wind cards. We have three wind secluded refuge. Um, if you're not already playing this card, you're going to be playing it, this card in the next set because it can counter the Black Moonbeam, I think is the name of the card, that destroy target J-Ruler players can't chase to this. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, if it's not main deck, it's going to be cyborg. If you're playing four rulers of memory, there's absolutely no reason why you're not playing this card. If, you, if sorry, keyword if there, you're playing a J-Ruler like Sylvia or Gil or something that you want to have your J-Ruler still in the field. Again, if they kill a Reflect after you got to do a, uh, a Tutor for the win, it's not that big of a deal. Or you just leave it on the Reflect side and who cares? They can't ever target it and it's a dead card in their hand. And then lastly, talking about killing J Rulers or just because it combos pretty well with Sylvia that she can deal a thousand damage on Enter. You can do this so you can absolutely kill, shut down, no chance, it's dead, their J Ruler's gone, and you get to feel great about life. So that is the sideboard and it's definitely something that I would recommend playing around with. I know not everyone is all ex super excited for Sylvia. Maybe they just want to keep in the Reflect plan and they have some other cards now at the sideboard. That's fine too, but I really do like the, what these two options offer. And I think that they have a lot going for them in terms of what they offer and the different sideboarding plans that you can do with them. So, as always guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments what you liked about it, what other sideboard plans that you would make. Uh, we would really like this deck. I think it's, again, something you should definitely keep sleeved up. Put it in your gauntlet, it's very, very important. So, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out gamersgauntlet.net for all your TCGs needs, and we'll catch you guys on the next Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment with what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Six Sage Gaming and check out some of the deck spotlights, dual series, and force of community videos that are already on the channel. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter, so feel free to find us there. Lastly, if you have a deck that you would like featured in a video, be sure to drop us a comment below. Until next time, take it easy.